shift two paper that was your evening paper in this particular paper i'll be solving the math in this particular video i'll be solving the mathematical part only for 30 questions our very best of luck here we go question number one it says let fx is equal to two mod of x squared plus five mod of x minus three for all x belonging to real numbers if m and n denote the number of points where f is not continuous and not differentiable respectively then m plus n is equal to here's your this is equal to modulus of uh, um, this is modulus of 2x square plus 5 mod of x minus 3. And uh, over here, if I convert it into this function, fx is equal to mod of 2x square plus fx minus 3 in this normal fx function. So how will the graph for this look like? This will be something like this. Here will be, if I break it up, to split the middle term you will have the two middle terms as a uh, let's break it you will have 2x common x plus 3 minus 1 common x plus 3 and uh, you will have 2x minus 1 and uh, x plus 3 as the two factors for this right so over here x will be equal to 1 by 2 or x will be equal to minus 3 so this is this are the two roots of it minus 3 so this graph will look something like this the first breaking point is this this is a curve over here and uh, then it will move on something like this because y is always positive why because this is a mod function so y is always got to be positive only right and the, another one this breaking point is 1 by 2 x is equal to 1 by 2 and x is equal to minus 3 these are the two breaking points over here and again the graph will go like this something all right, so this is the graph for fx is equal to 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 under the mod. Now, let's consider your fx function, which is given to you in the question. 2x squared plus f of mod 5 of mod x minus 3. Now, how will this graph look like? Only the difference is you are having a mod of x over here. Now, this graph will look something like this. This is your, uh, there are two breaking points. First of all, if I put... Uh, uh, you have to find out where it will touch the x-axis. One, you are having half. So let's check it for minus 1 by 2 also because f of 1 by 2 is equal to 0. Let's check it for minus 1 by 2 also. It will be 0 only. Let's confirm that. So 2 into 1 by 4 plus uh, um, this will be 1 by 2 only multiply minus 3. This will be, um, wait, wait. Okay, this is 1 by 2. So this will give me 1 by 2 plus 5 by 2 minus 3. This, of course, is equal to 0. So that means x is equal to minus 1 by 2 is also 1 root. Okay. Let's check for you are having f minus 3 is equal to 0. Let's check for f minus f3 also. This will be 2x square plus I will put x is equal to 3. So this is equal to 2 into 3 square plus 5 into 3. And... Um, Minus 3, is, this is not equal to 0. So that means this is not another root. Okay. And also, if you will check f of uh, minus 3, this will not come out to be 0. f of minus 3 will give me this. This is not equal to 0. So that means minus 3 and uh, 3, they are not the uh, roots for this function. Let's check for f0. You will have uh, um, f of 0. This is equal to f of 3 of 0. Okay, this will give me 2, 0, square, 5, 0, minus 3. This will be equal to 3. So that means the graph will look something like this for this function. The graph will be first, it will coincide with the x-axis at this and uh, this is the point 0, 3. Now this will behave as a straight line from this to this point. Straight line 
from here to here. This is a straight line. And uh, then it will move like this. This is the point 1 by 2. And then it will move further like this. Right? This is your function fx, which is given to you. Right? Don't write it as fx because this is not even. All right. So now you want, what do you want? Look at this graph. This is our required graph. And in the question, you have said that the function is a number, uh, said the m and n denote the number of points where f is not continuous and not differentiable. So function, you can easily see it's continuous everywhere. So m is equal to zero because the function is continuous everywhere for all x. So also n, this is having three. This is non-differentiable at this point, this one, this one, and this one. These are the three points where it's not differentiable. So n is equal to three. Okay, that is when x is equal to minus one by two and uh, x is equal to zero and uh, three, uh, one by two. Okay, these are the three points. So you have m is equal to zero, n is equal to three. You have to find out m plus n, which is equal to three. This is your answer option D. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number two. Let uh, alpha and beta be two roots for this equation where P is not equal to zero. PQR be the consecutive terms of non-constant GP. One by alpha, one by beta. Uh, the sum of it is three by four. You have to find out alpha minus beta whole square. I'll start with the equation. You have uh, Px square plus Qx minus R is equal to zero. Let's say P is equal to A upon R1 and uh, Q is equal to A and R is equal to AR1. Why is that? Because you have said that P, Q, R, they are the consecutive terms of a non-constant GP. So let's say if I say P is equal to A upon R1, then Q will be A and R will be A into R minus 1. Also, you are given 1 upon alpha plus beta. This is equal to 3 by 4. This gives me alpha plus beta upon this is equal to this. Let's fill the value for alpha and beta. Alpha and beta are the two roots for this equation. Okay. So you will have alpha plus beta. Some of the roots will be given by, let's solve it over here. Some of the roots is equal to sum of roots is minus b upon a. So minus b upon a gives you minus q upon p. And what was minus q, q, q. Okay. q is this and p is a upon r1. This gives me minus r1. Also, let's find out the product of alpha and beta. So alpha into beta, this is equal to, what was alpha into beta? Okay. This is c upon a, product of the roots product alpha into beta that is product of the roots that is equal to c upon a c is uh, minus r and a is p so you will have this as minus r upon p and uh, minus r r r r was a r1 let's write that a into r1 and p was equal to a upon r2 a, a upon r1 so this gives me minus R1 square. Let's fill in over here. You have a 3 by 4 as minus R1 upon minus R1 square. This is equal to 3 by 4. Or you have a R1 will cancel. 1 upon R is equal to 3 by 4. Or you have R1 as 4 by 3. Okay. What do you have to find out? I got the R1. Your, uh, I had to find out. Alpha, what is it? Alpha minus beta whole square. This is what I need to find out. That is equal to alpha square beta square minus 2ab. Okay. I can rewrite this as uh, this. Right. What is alpha plus beta equal to? Alpha plus beta was uh, minus R1. And uh, this is whole square minus 4 into this is this. This gives me r1 square, 4r1 square. This gives me 5r1 square. And what is your r1 equal to? We just solved, uh, what was it? Yeah, r1 was 4 by 3. This makes alpha minus beta square 
this was equal to 4 upon 3 square and it is uh, 80 upon 9. This is the answer to the question, 80 upon 9. You have first option as the correct answer. Hope you are clear. Let's move to the next question. Question number three, the number of solutions for the equation four sine square x minus four cos cube x plus nine minus four cos x is equal to zero where x is lying between minus five by two to five by two. You are having, let's write down the equation four sine square x minus four cos cube x plus nine minus four cos x is equal to zero. Uh, I will write it as four sine square x like, uh, you know, sine square x is this so i will write it as 4 minus 4 cos square x minus 4 cos cube x 9 4 cos x is equal to 0 or dividing both sides by minus 4 cos cube x plus 4 cos square x 4 cos x is equal to 13 okay i'm dividing both sides by minus you can take anyways so this will equal to 13 and uh See, this value, this value is uh, the greatest. The maximum value of cos x that is possible is 1. Cos x have can the maximum value as 1. So, it is always less than equal to 1. That means 4 into this whole expression. The maximum value this expression can have is 4. This can have is 4. And this one can, uh, these terms can have the maximum value as 4. So, your LHS will be always less than equal to 12. And it can never be equal to 13. So this is not possible. Therefore, it has a zero solution. Right? Option D is the correct answer. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number four, the value of this integral is equal to. Let's say this is equal to i. So i is 0 to 1 limits to x cubed minus 3x square minus x plus 1 dx. Now this integral, this has two factors. The first one is 2x minus 1. This is one of the factors you can check for this. If you divide this expression with 2x minus 1, you will get the quotient as x square minus x minus 1 dx. Whole power. 1 by 3, the limit 0 to 1. Now, applying the King's rule. A very important rule. You would have seen that it's used in every another question. So, that rule says if you are having limits 0 to a to b for any fx function, this is equal to a to b f of a plus b minus x dx so you will have i as this is limit 0 to 1 now this 2 into x will be turned into 0 plus 1 minus x this is equal to this minus 1 x 1 minus x this is 1 minus x whole square minus x again 1 minus x This is 1 minus x minus 1 power 1 by 3 dx. Now this will give me i is equal to integral 0 to 1. This will give me 1 minus 2x and uh, this will be um, 1 plus x squared minus 2x. This will be minus 1 plus x minus 1, right? Whole power 1 by 3. So now this i is equal to 0 to 1, 1 minus 2x and uh, this will be reduced to 1 and uh, this 1 will also cancel. You will have x square minus uh, x. x square minus x minus 1 minus this cancels, not this one. Okay, so okay, this raised to power 1 by 3 is equal to 0. Look at this one. This is your equation 1 and uh, this is your equation 2. Or uh, you can say that i is equal to, I'll take this minus outside 0 to 1, 2x minus 1 into x square minus x minus 1 whole power 1 by 3 dx. So don't you see from here, if I take this as 2, that... Uh, uh, comparing this 1 and 2, here i and this will be equal to minus i, right? From 1 and 2, i is equal to minus i. This gives me 2, i is equal to 0 or i is equal to 0. This is the answer to the question. 
Here is option A. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 5. Let P be the point on the ellipse x square upon 9 plus y square upon 4 is equal to 1. Let the line passing through the point P and parallel to the y-axis meet the circle this at the point Q such that P and Q are on the same side of the x-axis. Then a centricity of the locus of the point R on PQ such that their ratio is 4 is to 3 as P moves on the ellipse is. To, answer, to understand the question, let's draw the figure. So this is your figure, this outer one, this represents your circle and the inner one, this one is your ellipse and this one is your circle. Let the point Q represents 3 cos theta because this is the equation of the circle. It is given by x square plus y square is equal to 9. This is equal to 3 square. So uh, your uh, the any point which is lying on your circle will be given by any point on the circle will be given by 3 cos theta 3 sin theta because the radius of the circle is equal to 3. Similarly, any point on the ellipse, ellipse equation is, uh, what is this? x square upon 9, y square upon 4 is equal to 1. Similarly, any point on the ellipse will be given by 3 cos theta because this 9 is equal to 3 square and this is equal to 2 square. So this would be 3 cos theta to sin theta. All right. Now, you are given also that uh, Q lies on this uh, your circle and uh, P ratio, P R ratio R Q. This is your point P which is having the coordinates as a uh, weight. All right, so P had the coordinates as, this is your point P with the coordinates 3 cos theta and 2 sin theta. And uh, this Q had the coordinates 3 cos theta, 3 sin theta. There's a point in the middle R, which is dividing P R ratio R Q. This is given to you in the question as 4 is to 3 and let the coordinates of R be H and K. Applying the section formula, you have H is equal to, um, this is given by 4 into this, 12 cos theta plus 9 cos theta upon 7. This gives you 21 cos theta upon 7, or this is equal to 3 cos theta. Similarly, the K will be given by 9, 12. 12 sine theta plus 6 sine theta upon 4 plus 3 that is equal to 7 so this is 18 sine theta 18 by 7 sine theta now locus of this point will be given by x square upon your this is equal to 3 square y square upon 18 by 7 square is equal to 1 which will give me x square upon 9 plus 49 y square upon 324. This is equal to 1. We had to find out what the centricity of the locus of the point R on this. So, a centricity of this locus I have to find out. So, centricity is given by 1 minus B square upon A square. B square is this. This is your B, B and this is your A. So, this is given by 1 minus B square, which is 18 by 7 square, which is. Uh, B square is 324 by 49 into A square, which is this. So this on solving will give you root of 117 upon 21 or uh, on this will be like 3 will be um, common from here. 9, you will have 13, 9, sir. And uh, here will be 7. So root of 13 by 7, this is the answer to the question. 13 by 7, root of 13 by 7, this is option Hope you are clear. Let's move to the next question. Question number six. Let M and N be the coefficients of the seventh and the thirteenth terms in the expansion of this. And uh, you have to find out N by M raised to power one by three. I have to find out N and M basically to from this question. So give an expression one by three x power one by three plus one upon two x power two by three uh, raised to power this. Okay. So you have to find the uh, let m be the coefficient of the seventh and the and be the coefficient of the thirteenth term. The seventh term from here will be given by three seven 
is equal to 18 C6. Now I am always only interested in the coefficient, so I will not take X into the consideration. I'll only take the coefficients of X. All right. So the first one, this is 1 by 3 power 18 minus 6. Second is 1 by 2 from here. This is power 6 only. 18 C6, uh, let it be like this only. What is the 13th term coefficient? This will be 18 C. 13 minus 1, this is 12. 1 by 3, 18 minus 12. 1 by 2 power 12. This is your, according to the question, this is your M and this is your N. Let's divide both of them. N by M. 18 C, 12 into 1 by 3 power 6, 1 by 2 power 12. Divided by 18 C 6, 1 by 3 power 12, 1 by 2 power 6. This on solving uh, one thing, see 18 C 12 is equal to 18 C 6. Because you have N C R is equal to N C N minus R. So that means these two are equal, they will cut out each other. And uh, you will have uh, 1 by 2 power 12 minus 6 divided by 1 by 3 power 12 minus 6. This will be equal to 1 by 2 uh, power 6, 1 by 3 power 6, right? Hope I'm doing right. Okay, so this makes it n by m. This is equal to 3 by 2 power 6. What do you have to find out? It's third root. So let's go on for third root. This will be 3 by 2, 6 into this, this will cancel. You have 9 by 4 as the right answer. 9 by 4, option D. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next. Question number 7, let f be the non-zero real number. Suppose f is a function from r to r is a differentiable function such that f0 is equal to 2 and limit x approaching minus infinity is equal to 1. Then f dash x is equal to this function for all x belonging to the real numbers. What is the value for f of minus log 2 equal to? You are given the differential equation f dash x is equal to alpha fx plus 3 or you can say f dash x minus alpha fx is equal to 3. This is of the type dy by dx is plus px into y is into y is equal to qx. So that means uh, the integrating factor here will be equal to e raised to power p dx, which is equal to e raised to power, let's take minus outside alpha dx, or uh, this will be equal to e raised to power minus alpha x. Uh, minus was this, uh, divided by minus 1 plus c, or uh, let it be like this only. This is equal to e raised to power minus alpha x. Now, this, uh, uh, this equation Solution for this equation will be given by y into integrating factor is equal to integral of qx into integrating factor dx plus c. So you have y integrating factor is e raised to power minus alpha is equal to integral of q was equal to 3 and this is equal to e raised to power minus alpha dx plus c. This will be equal to minus 3 upon alpha e raised to power minus alpha plus c. This is your fx into e raised to power minus alpha x. Or uh, you dividing both sides, uh, multiplying both sides by e raised to power alpha x, you will have fx is equal to minus 3 upon alpha plus c into e raised to power alpha x. Because e raised to power minus alpha x into e raised to power alpha x, the product of both of them is equal to 1. So let's find out the value of C. You are given in the question F0 is equal to 2. Let's pick that up. You have F0 is equal to 2. So this equation will become 2 is equal to minus 3 upon alpha plus C into e raised to power 0. Or um, mm, give me a minute that F0 is equal to 2. Fine. So this will be 2 plus 3 upon alpha. This is the value for C. So this this equation becomes Fx is equal to minus 3 upon alpha plus 2 plus 3 upon alpha e raised to power alpha x. Right? Uh, so this is the equation. Now the second one, you are given limit x approaching minus infinity, Fx equal to 1. Also, limit x approaching minus in, in, <clears throat> infinity 
एफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू लिमिट दिस विल बी एक्स अप्रोचिंग माइनस इन्फिनिटी थ्री अपॉन एल्फा माइनस थ्री अपॉन एल्फा आई पुट फॉर द टाइम बींग दिस इक्वल टू सी ओनली एल्फा एक्स एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू वन so this means these two equations they are equal to one let's approach this will be three upon alpha plus zero is equal to one this gives me alpha is equal to minus three now this is something contradictory alpha can't be negative how can we say that alpha can't be negative see you are having your f x let's pick that up f x was equal to minus three upon alpha plus this into e power alpha x so limit x approaching minus infinity this will be multiplying both sides i'll do one thing first alpha x so limit x approaching minus infinity fx i'll multiply both the sides by e raised to power minus alpha x this will be given by limit x approaching minus infinity minus 3 upon alpha um this in the bracket e raised to power minus alpha x this will be 2 plus 3 upon alpha so this makes it we are approaching infinity this makes 2 plus 3 mm -hmm. upon this is equal to 0 and this gives me alpha is equal to minus 2 upon 3 right all right now alpha is equal to minus 2 upon 3 let's put this into your fx so your fx in that case this will be equal to minus 3 by alpha which is minus 2 upon uh 3 upon alpha which is there is a correction alpha is equal to minus 3 by 2 how is that uh see over here i am doing this solution you had 2 plus 3 upon alpha is equal to 0 3 upon alpha is equal to minus 2 or alpha will be equal to minus 3 upon 2 Okay, so let's fill in this equation. Here will be minus three upon two. I'll rewrite this minus three upon alpha. This is uh, this minus three into two uh, divided by minus three multiplied by two. And uh, further, this was plus two upon three uh, alpha, which is minus three into two into e raised to power minus three by two x. This will give me minus two plus two. Into this will be three and uh, this will cancel, so this will be two minus two e power minus three by two x, which will be equal to two only. This is plus two, which will be equal to two only. So here you have when you have x approaching, when you had the x approaching minus infinity, so your f x came out to be this. But you are given over here that when the no limit x is approaching minus infinity, the f x is equal to one, which contradicts. But limit X approaching minus infinity, f x is equal to one. So this comes out to be two, and this comes out to be one. That means the information given over here, this contradicts. A can alpha cannot be negative. So that's not there. the The alpha value which we are getting is not possible. But there is one thing. If in the question, anyhow, till now, whatever the sum we have done, there is no solution for the sum because alpha is coming out to be negative. From this point of view, and uh, if I see from here the contradiction, when if I put to in the function alpha as negative, I will get the limit f x is equal to two, which contradicts. Okay, from here, from x f of zero is equal to two, I got the value of c. When I put in this equation, I got the value of alpha is equal to minus three. And I, when I put this alpha value minus three in the given function, I got the value for the given function at limit. X approaching minus infinity to be two, but in the question you are given that this is equal to one. So both are contradicting each other. That means the statement is wrong. There is something wrong in the statement itself. Let's check if we can help it sometime. Anyways, this is a bonus bonus question for you because uh, this is not possible. But if the question would have been, see, our question finishes at this point only. There is no further solution to the question. I'm just discussing that in case you were given limit. X approaching f, uh, uh, sorry, limit x approaching infinity, f x is equal to one. In place of limit x approaching minus infinity, f x is equal to one. So if would this would have been used like positive limits would have been used instead of the negative limits, then what would have happened? Your f x which was equal to this. E raised to power alpha x, 
for limit x approaching infinity f x is equal to 1, you will have limit x approaching infinity minus 3 upon alpha 2 plus this into e raised to power alpha x is equal to 1. Now, if I would have taken alpha as minus 3 or alpha to be any negative value, then 3 minus a, right? 3 minus a would have been equal to 1. Or from here, alpha would have been equal to minus 3. That means we would have got our answer. See, from here also, I'm getting alpha is equal to minus 3. So that would have done. And in that case, fx would be 1 plus. See, what is your fx? Let's write on fx once. This was uh, this, this into this. So this would have been 1 plus 2 plus 3 upon minus 3. This is equal to minus 1 into e raised to power alpha x or uh, um, like this. Okay. So this would have been 1 plus e raised to power alpha x. That was your fx. So now you had to find out f of minus log 2. Let's try to find f of minus log 2 in this case. This would have been 1 plus e raised to power uh, alpha x. Alpha was minus 3. And uh, this would have been minus log 2. This would have given me 1 plus e raised to power 3 log 2. Which can, I can write it as 2 power 3. Right. Log 3 power 2 is equal to log 2 power 3. So what is this? This becomes equal to 1 plus 2 power 3 which is equal to 9. So 9 would have been answer in this case. In that case if it would have been infinity instead of minus infinity in the question then the answer would have been 9. But till now we are given the question that it is approaching minus infinity. So we don't have any choice given. It may be a bonus question for you. Hope you are given. Hope, uh, hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number eight, let me be the points on this line, which are at a distance of six units from this point. If the centroid of the triangle is given by alpha, beta, gamma, then what is the sum of their squares? Any point which is uh, the line is given to you, first of all, this is this. No, any point of this line, if I write it in their terms, let's say this is equal to lambda. So any point on the line will be given by 8 lambda minus 3, 2 lambda plus 4, 2 lambda minus 1. Now, if at a distance of 6 units from this point, it will be P and Q are the points which are a distance of 6 units from this point. So, if at a distance of 6 units, from the point R, which are given as a, which is given to you as 1, 2, 3, this will be equal to 8 lambda minus 3 minus 1 square 2 lambda plus 4 minus 2 square 2 lambda minus 1 minus 3 square. This is equal to 6 square, which is equal to 36. So solving it, now it's a big number. Have some patience. This will be 64 lambda square. Okay, wait, wait. Let me solve this. 8 lambda minus 4 whole square. 2 lambda plus 2. 2 lambda minus 4 square is equal to 36. Let's take 4 common from here. So 4 square into 2 lambda minus 1 square plus 2 square lambda plus 1 square plus 2 square lambda minus 2 square is equal to 36. You have 16 4 lambda plus 1 minus 4 lambda 4 lambda square lambda 2 lambda 4 lambda square 4 minus 4 lambda is equal to 36. 64 lambda 16 64 lambda plus 4 lambda square 4 8 lambda 4 lambda square 16 minus 16 lambda is equal to 36. Big numbers. Let's solve them. Let's do the cancellations wherever possible. This and this will... Here was... No. Here was lambda square. Wait, wait. So here was lambda square. And uh, from here you will have... This is 64, 4 and 4. You have 72 lambda square. Then you have 64. 
and uh, this will be minus. So this is minus 72 lambda again. And uh, here you have, uh, okay, we are done with this 16, 20, and uh, 16. So 32 and 36 is equal to 36. These two will cancel, taking 72 lambda common. You have lambda minus 1 is equal to 0. So this gives me either lambda is equal to 0 or lambda is equal to 1. So what is the point P and Q now becomes? For the lambda 0 and lambda 1, the their point, any point on the line, it was 8, uh, this 8 lambda minus 3, 2 lambda plus 4, 2 lambda minus 1. So from here, the P point will be given by when I'm taking lambda is equal to 0, this will be <laughs> minus 3. O and minus 1 and when I'm putting lambda is equal to 1 this will be 5 6 and 1 therefore the centroid of triangle P Q R this was your point P this was your point Q and the R was given by 1 2 and 3 centroid of the triangle you know a plus b uh, this is x1 x2 plus x3 divided by 3 so minus 3 plus 5 plus 1 upon 3 um yeah and uh, this will be 6 4, 2, 3, 1 minus 1 plus 3 upon 3. This will give me alpha as 1 from here. This will come out to be 1. This will become um, 4 and uh, this will be 1 again. Okay. So alpha, beta and gamma. You have to find out this, this and this which will be 1 square plus 4 square 1 square, that is 18. So, this is the answer to the question. We have option C as the correct answer. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 9. Consider triangle ABC where A, B and C coordinates are given. If the angle bisector of the triangle angle BAC meets BC at D, then the length of the projection of vector AD on vector AC is Okay, let's make the triangle. This is your point A, B, minus 1, uh, no, B is minus 2, 8, 0, and the C is 3, 6, and 7. Okay, uh, now you are given the angle by sector of angle BAC meets the line BC at D. So this is the one, it, this is the angle by sector, and this meets at D. Then the length of projection of the vector AD on AC is First of all, let's know the nature of the triangle. You will, I'll see what is the AB equal to. AB will be given by root of, uh, um, this will be 1 plus 2 square, 3 minus 8 square, 2 minus 0 square. This will give me 9, 25 and 4. This okay. is equal to 38, root of 38. Mm, yes. And what will be BC equal to? BC will be given by, what is BC? This is 3 plus 2, 6 minus 8, 7 minus 0 square. This will be equal to root of 25 and 4 and 49. So this is equal to, this is equal to 29 and this, this will be 8 and 7. 78 root and let's check AC. AC is equal to 3 minus 1, 6 minus 3, 7 minus 2 square, which is equal to 4, 9, and 25, which is root of 38. So you see one thing, AB is equal to AC. That means you have uh, this, I mean, AB and AC, they are <clears throat> equal signs. This is an isosceles triangle. Now, if this is an isosceles triangle, then what is BD and the DC ratio? This is also 1 is to 1 because this ratio and this ratio is 1. Now, since AB ratio AC is equal to 1 is to 1, then BD ratio DC is equal to 1 is to 1. Okay. Now, why is that? I'm using the angle bisector theorem over here that you have done probably in your 10th class angle bisector theorem which states that when uh, angle uh, when, in, when a side bisecting one angle 
So when AD, the bisector of an angle bisects the opposite side in the equal proportion of the other two sides. So if this angle is being uh, bisected, then uh, BD will be equal to BD ratio. DC will be having the same ratio as AB to AC. Okay, this is your angle bisector theorem. So that means D divides BC in ones to one ratio. So you already have the B point, which is minus two, eight and zero under the C point, which is three, six and seven. And this is the point D. This will be given by minus two plus three upon two, eight plus six upon two, zero plus seven upon two. This will be equal to one by two, and 7 and 7 by 2. This is your point D. Now, what will be the A vector given by? This is your D point and the A point was equal to 1, 3, 2. So, A D vector will be given by 1 by 2 minus 1 I cap 7 minus 3 J cap 7 by 2 minus 2 K cap. This will be minus 1 by 2 I 4j 3 by 2 k or uh, similarly ac vector this will be given by what was uh, let's write down a and c a is 1 3 2 and uh, c was equal to 3 6 7 so this will be given by 3 minus 1 6 minus 3 7 minus k so this is 2i 3j and 5k vector right now this is ad and ac projection of ad on ac this will be given by let's have that in picture okay now the projection of uh, ad on ac this will be given by minus 1 by 2 into 2 4 into 3, 3 by 2 into 5. And uh, this is divided by root of this, this and this. This will be giving me minus 1 plus 12 plus 15 by 2 divided by root of, uh, uh, this is 38. So this is going to give me, this will be 11 plus 15 by 2 and uh, 11 plus 15 by 2, which is uh, 22 plus 15 by 2, um, 37 upon 2 into root of 38. So this is the answer to the question. Let's check with the, you have the first one. This is the right answer. Option A. Hope you're clear with this. Let's move to the next question then. Question number 10. Let S and denote the sum of first n terms of the arithmetic progression if s10 is equal to 390 the ratio of the 10th and the 5th term is 15 is to 7 what is s15 minus s5 equal to okay so you have two things let's discuss two formulas first one is nth term of an ap is given by a into n plus 1 a plus n minus 1 into d and sn which is the sum of n terms it is given by 2n plus 2a in uh, 8 Sorry, Sn is equal to n by 2, 2a plus mm -hmm. n minus 1 into d. You are given here the ratio of the 10th and the 5th term is 15 by 7. So that means t10 upon t5 is equal to 15 by 7. Using this formula, you will have n uh, here. Uh, this will be a plus 9t upon a plus 4t is equal to 15 by 7. Let's do the cross multiplication. You will have... 7a 63d is equal to 15a plus 60d or 8a minus 3d is equal to 0. Now, second one you are given S10 is equal to 390. So, this will be given by 10 by 2, 2a plus <clears throat> this and this is equal to 390. This is equal to 5, 2a plus 9d or uh, dividing this with the you will have 78 over here is equal to 2a plus 9d. I have two equations. So these are the two ones. Now first one, let's do multiply this with 4. You will have 8a plus 36d is equal to 312. Also 8a minus 3d is equal to 0 minus plus. 
we will cancel and you have 39D is equal to 312 or D will be equal to 8. If D is equal to 8, already you had 8A minus 3D is equal to 0. 8A minus uh, 24 or A will be equal to 3. So I will get the value of A is equal to 3 now. Correct. What you had to find out in the question was S15 minus S5. S15 minus S5, this will be given by 15 by 2, 2A plus 14D minus. This will be 5 by 2, 2A plus 4D. Correct. Let's, uh, now look at calculations. This is 15 by 2. This will be 6 plus 14. This, uh, this will be. 112 and minus 5 by 2, 6, 32 or uh, you have 115 into 118 upon 2 minus 5 into 38 upon 2, 9. This will cancel at uh, 59 and uh, you will have here the subtraction of the two. This will give you, this is 15 into 59 minus 5 into 19. I will take 5 common and uh, this will be 3 into 59 minus 5 uh, minus 19. This is uh, 5 into, this is 158 and the answer will be 791 solvent. Okay. So you have a C option as the right answer. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 11. If integral of 0 to pi by 3 cos power 4 dx is equal to a uh, pi plus b root 3, where a and b are the rational numbers, then 9a plus 8b is equal to. So here you have this is the equation. All right, let's do one thing. This is 0 to pi by 3. I can write cos power 4x as cos square x square, right? And this will be equal to 0, this. If I multiply this with the 2, so I'll be dividing here with 1 by 4, correct? Okay, 2 cos square x, this can be written as 1 plus cos 2x whole square. So this is equal to 1 by 4 integral of 0 to pi by 3. 1 plus cos square 2x 2 cos 2x dx or this will be equal to 1 by 4 under integral of 1 dx plus the limit 0 to pi by 3. And uh, again, 1 by 4, 0, 2, pi by 3. Now, this uh, cos square 2x, I will write it as 1 plus cos 4x divided by 2 dx. 1 by 4 integral this limits uh, 2. I'm taking outside the so cos 2x. This will be, I'll, I'll let it be this only. No issues. Now, let's find out the integrals of all of them. This will be equal to 1 by 4 x limits 1 by 4. So this will be um, 1 by 2 into x limits plus this will be 1 by 8. Now of course this will be sine 4x upon 4 the limits and this will be equal to 1 by 2 sine 2x upon 2, here will be your limits. Correct. Now, fill in the limits also. You will have here 1 by 4. Let's keep it outside. 1 by 4. Uh, this will be pi by 3 plus uh, this will be 1 by 2 into pi by 3. 1 by 2. Because I have taken 1 by 4 outside. Okay. Into sine 3 pi by 4 sine 
4 pi by 3 sin 4 pi by 3 and uh, this will be 2 because I have taken 1 by 4 outside. This will be 2 and uh, here will be uh, 2 upon 2 sin 2 pi by 3. All right. So this I have closed the limits now. Okay, let's do the calculations now. Only the calculations thing is left. This will be pi by 3, pi by 6, 1 by 8, sine 4, pi by 3. And uh, this is sine 2 pi by 3. This is equal to this. And uh, here will be sine pi by 3, um, this 6 LCM. This will be 3 pi upon this plus 1 by 8 uh, this will be equal to minus root 3 upon 2 this will be root 3 upon 2 and uh, this is equal to let's open the pi by 2 this will be pi by 8 plus uh, it was this is multiplication right yes so this is 1 upon 32 wait this was okay 1 by 32 into this how, how shall I solve this thing? This will be minus this plus this or uh, pi by 8. I'm just getting a bit confused. My, this I'm taking outside. This will be 1 minus this thing or uh, you will have this as pi by 8 plus root 3 by 2. This will be 31 by 32. Okay. Pi by 8 plus 31 into I'm redoing it from here. There was some calculations mistake. If it was supposed to be 1 by 4, it would have been multiplied by 2. So you would have got 8 in the denominator. This was pi by 8 plus root 3 by 8. Let's take that common. And this will be 1 minus root 3 by 8 from here also. Okay. So this will give me pi by 8 plus root 3 by 8. This will be 8. Uh, this is uh, 8 minus 1 upon 8 or uh, you will have pi by 8 plus 7 into root 3 upon 64. So this is uh, the answer to the question. Now let's compare it with this given one. Uh, one uh, that is uh, a pi plus b root 3. Now this is equivalent to a pi plus b root 3. So from here you have a as 1 by 8 and b as 7 by 64. You had to find in the question 9a plus 8b. So this is equal to 9 into 1 by 8 plus 8 into 7 by 64. 9 by 8 plus 7 by 8 which is equal to 16 by 8 and that is 2. So the answer to the question is uh, here. We have option a as the correct answer. Hope you got that. Let's move to the next question. Question number 12. If Z is a complex number such that the magnitude of Z is greater than equal to 1, then the minimum value for this complex number, magnitude of this complex number is. So you are having Z plus 1 by 2 into 3 plus 4. Ita magnitude is, uh, see this is greater than equal to magnitude of Z minus 3 by 2 plus 2 iota. This is greater than equal to what is the magnitude of z? You are given that this is greater than equal to 1. So I can write, uh, write 1 over here minus. This is given by 3 by 2 square minus uh, plus. This will be 2 square. That is equal to this. Now this is greater than equal to 1 minus root of 9 plus 16 upon 4. Or this is equal. This is greater than equal to 1 minus. This will be 25 by 4 or this will be equal to 5 by 2. 1 minus 5 by 2, this will give me, um, you have a, what is this state then? Wait. Okay. Here you have, this is greater than equal to 1 minus 5 by 2. Now this is 2 minus this. This is equal to this. Or uh, this will give me magnitude of this. Or uh, this is greater than equal to, this is greater than equal to, 3 by 2. So that means which is the correct option? Option C is the right one. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन इफ द डोमेन ऑफ द फंक्शन एफ एक्स गिवन बाय दिस इज लाइंग बिटवीन माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू एल्फा एंड यूनियन बीटा टू इन्फिनिटी व्हाट इज द वैल्यू फॉर एल्फा क्यूब प्लस एल्फा स्क्वायर प्लस बीटा क्यूब इक्वल टू यू आर हैविंग द फंक्शन एफ एक्स एज रूट एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस ट्वेंटी माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस लॉग ऑफ एक्स स्क्वायर टू एक्स माइनस फिफ्टीन दिस शुड बी पॉजिटिव बिकॉज दिस इज लाइंग अंडर द रूट सो यू हैव एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव दिस शुड बी पॉजिटिव सो फ्रॉम हियर यू हैव एक्स विल बिलोंग टू माइनस इन्फिनिटी टू फाइव यूनियन फाइव टू इन्फिनिटी लेट से दिस इज वन ऑल्सो दिस कैन नॉट बी जीरो दिस इज नंबर वन Also, four minus x square cannot be equal to zero. That means x cannot be equal to plus minus two. So from here, uh, okay, let's remember only this thing. Now the third thing, this expression, this should be positive. X square plus two x minus fifteen should be positive. So the third thing says you x square plus two x minus fifteen. This should be positive. Let's factorize this. This will be x square. Plus, uh, this will be five x minus three x minus fifteen x plus five x minus three. These are the two ones. So from here, x will belong to mine from minus infinity to five and three to infinity. Let's say this is the third thing. Now from all of them, from your first, second, and third. You have x belongs to minus infinity minus five union five to infinity. So if I compare it with the given one, what are you given over here? That this is equal to this minus infinity to alpha minus infinity to this was uh, alpha and uh, union beta to infinity. Right. So that means. Alpha is equal to minus five and beta is equal to five. You have to find out alpha square beta cube. So this will give me uh, minus five square and one twenty five. This is equal to one hundred and fifty. So this is the right answer option C. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question then. Question number fourteen. Consider the relations R one and R two defined as a R one b is equal to a square plus b square is equal to one for all a b belonging to real numbers, and a b R two c d implies a plus d is equal to b plus c for all a b c d belonging to natural numbers. Then, which of the following is true about R one and R two? First one, you have a R one b is equal to a square plus b square is equal to one. Now. For reflexive, any a r a it should uh, and that's the relation of a r a for all a belonging to this r relation. Okay, so that means here you will have uh, if for the reflexive you will have a square plus a square is equal to one to a square is equal to one, or uh, a will be equal to plus minus one by root two. So that means r one is not reflexive. As A A does not belong to the relation R for all A belonging to R one. Okay. Now let's consider your R two relation. Um, for the reflexive, you have A B R two A B for all A B belonging to. Um, this is A B belonging to natural. Into natural, right? So you have a plus b is equal to b plus a. That means uh, a b a b belongs to R two for all a b belonging to this n n, right? So that means R two is reflexive. Let's see for symmetric now. So for the symmetric, if A B R two C D, then C D R two A D A B exists. So A B R 
2 cd implies that a plus d is equal to b plus c and uh, for cd r2 ab implies Okay, for this, uh, uh, this implies that uh, what was I? Mm, C plus B is equal to C plus B is equal to A plus D. So this is symmetric also. Now let's see for transitor. It says if A, B, R2, C, D, and C, D, R2, E, F. Then A, B, R2, E, F. So A, B, R2, C, D. This is given by A plus D, B plus C. Let's say this is 1. And uh, C, D, R2, E, F is equal to C plus F is equal to E plus D. From both the equations, from 1 and 2, you have A plus D plus C plus F is equal to B plus C plus E plus D or A plus F because they will cancel, this will cancel and what else D will cancel. A plus F is equal to B plus E. This means A, B, R2, E, F. So that means it's transitive as well. So this implies that R2 is an equivalence relation. Hope you are clear with this. That makes R2 only is the equivalence relation option B. Question number 15. If the mirror image of the point 349 on this line is alpha, beta, gamma, then what is the value for this expression? You are having the line as x minus 1 upon 3, y plus 1 upon 2, z minus 2 upon 1. Let's say that's equal to lambda. Now, any point on this line is uh, given by, let's say, q. This is given by 3 lambda plus 1, 2 lambda minus 1 and lambda plus 2. And see, this is the point P according to the question. And uh, this is your line, which is this x minus 1 upon 3, y plus 1 upon 2, z minus 2 upon 1. So this falls perpendicularly on this line at the point. Let's say this is the Q point. And here is your P dash, which is given by alpha, beta and gamma. Right, you have to find out. First of all, let's find out the coordinates of Q now. Now, any point, let's say Q on this line is given by these coordinates and uh, what are the direction ratios of this line? Let's say this is line L1. Direction ratios of L1 will be given by 3, 2 and 1. Now, according to the question, PQ is perpendicular to L1. So that means your dot product will be equal to 0. PQ dot l1 is equal to 0. Uh, what is your pq vector? I have to find out. Let's go with this first. pq will be given by 3 lambda plus 1 minus so it will be 3 because the p point is this 3, 4, 9 and uh, then you have 2 lambda minus 1 minus 4 then you have lambda plus 2 minus 9. So this will be given by 3 lambda minus 2 2 lambda minus 5 and uh, this is lambda minus 7. Now let's fill in in this equation. You have pq dot l is equal to 0. I'm only taking the direction ratio. So 3 uh, lambda minus 2, 2 lambda minus 5 and uh, lambda minus 7 dot product with the another one, the l1 that was 3 to 1. This is equal to 0. Uh, this will give me 9 lambda minus 6 plus 4 lambda minus 10 plus lambda minus 7 is equal to this. We have 14 lambda is equal to 21 or uh, 21 or what? 23. Our lambda will be equal to, this is your lambda, this is equal to 23 upon 14. So what does your Q point becomes? Q point which was equal to 
3 lambda plus 1, 2 lambda minus 1, lambda plus 2. So the Q point turns out to be 83 upon 15, 32 upon 14, um, and uh, 51 upon 14. Now, that was your point P. We got the P. P was 3, 4, 9, I think. And this is your point Q. We got the coordinates of Q as well. This is 83. 14, 32, 14, and 51, 14. And uh, this is your point P dash, alpha, beta, and gamma. So easy, now. P is uh, what? It is a midpoint of P, P dash. Q is midpoint on P, P dash. So you will have uh, 83 by 14 is equal to 3 plus alpha upon 2 and... Thirty two upon fourteen is equal to four plus beta upon two. Fifty one upon fourteen is equal to nine plus gamma upon two. Correct. Let's solve to get the values of this. Uh, will be seven eighty three by seven minus three is equal to alpha, and uh, you'll get the value of alpha as uh, eighty three. Minus 21, 83 minus 21, which is 62 upon this. This is value for alpha. And uh, you have 32 upon 7 minus 4 is equal to beta. For this, uh, beta will be 28. Uh, this will be 4 by 7. And uh, then you have 51 by 7 minus 9 is equal to gamma. Or you will have the value of gamma as this. Minus 12 upon 7. This is your value of alpha, beta, and gamma. You have to find out 14, alpha, beta, and gamma. So this will be 14, 62 by 7, 4 by 7, 12 by 7. On solving this whole thing, you will get 108 as your answer. So 108, this is the option C. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 16. Let fx be given by this function x minus 1 when x is even and 2x when x is odd. Or all a belonging to the natural numbers f of f of f of a is equal to 21. Then limit x approaching a minus this expression where t this in the square brackets represents the greatest integer less than or equal to t is equal to. So here you are having f x as x minus 1 and 2x. This is in the case when x is even and this is the case when x is odd. So you have to consider, let's say this function, let's say a is odd number. So f of a, this will be given by the odd, that is 2x. So it will be 2a. Now f of f of a, this makes f of 2a, this is equal to f of 2a which is an even function so that makes 2 into um, x uh, 2a so this will be 2a minus 1 right now the third one f of f of f of a this makes f of 2 minus a which is an odd function so i will be picking up 2 into 2a minus 1 now according to the question this is equal to 21 so you have, see, this is an even number because it's a multiple of two and this is an odd number. How is that even possible? This is not possible. So that means A is, this is not done for the question. And uh, now let's say that A is even number. So you will have F of A following the same method. It will be given by A minus one. This will be given by A minus one. So F of F of A. This is equal to 2 into a minus 1 and f of f of f of a. This is nothing but f of 2a minus 1, which is an even function. So this will be given by 2 into um, this is, yes. So this will be 2 into this. 2 into a minus 1. Wait, this is. 
I'll rewrite it here. So this is equal to f of uh, 2 into a minus 1. This will be 2 into a minus 1 minus 1. Or this will be equal to 2a minus 3. Right. Now, let's see. You are given that this is equal to 21. So this makes 2a is equal to 24. Or you have a as 12. Now, the limit that you have to find out. Limit x approaching. It is a minus. So let's fill the values of a wherever they are. 12 minus. This will be modulus of uh, what is it modulus or what yes modulus modulus of x cube upon a greatest integer of x upon a this whole thing which is 12 all right so this will come out to be um, this is a is 12 and uh, this comes out to be 12 cube because this is minus mod so no problem in that and uh, from here you will have limit x approaching 12 minus greatest integer for x upon 12 so when x is approaching 12 minus and here will be divided by 12 so this will give me this is 12 square and this will give me 0 the answer to the question 144 so this is the answer to the question we have option B as the correct answer. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 17. Let the system of equations this, this and this have infinite number of solutions. Then what is the value for lambda plus 2 mu? These are your system of equations 1, 2 and 3. So if I write in the determinant form, this can be written as uh, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1 and 4, 3 and lambda. Now this is having an infinite solutions, infinite number of solutions. That means this determinant is equal to 0. Let's find out determinant. This will be given by 1 into 3 lambda minus 3 minus 2 into 2 lambda minus 4 plus 3 into 6 minus 12. This is equal to 0 or uh, 3 lambda minus 3 minus 4 lambda plus 8 plus so this will give me minus 6. So this will be minus 18. This is equal to 0. You have minus lambda and uh, minus 13 is equal to 0 or you have lambda is equal to 13 over here. All right. So I got the value for lambda. Now I want to get the value for mu. And where is your mu? It is lying over here at this place. So let's pick up the equations now. Again, I'll uh, this it lies over here. So I have to take delta 3 now. Let's write it here. Delta 3, this will be given by 1, 2, 5. Because I'm picking this 1, 2, and 5. Next 2, 3, 9, 2, 3, 9. Next will be 4, 3 and mu. Again, because this is uh, this is having infinite solution, so determinant will be equal to 0. This will be given by 1 into 3 mu minus 27 minus 2 into 2 mu minus 36 plus 5 into 6 minus 12. So this on this will be equal to 0 and uh, this on solving will give me 3 mu minus 27 minus 4 mu plus 72 plus uh, uh, this is minus 6, right? So this will be minus 30. That is equal to 0. Okay. So this gives me minus mu and uh, here will be 57 and uh, 57 and 40. Okay. This will be 15. This is equal to 0. This gives me mu is equal to 15. I got the value for lambda as 13 and mu as 15. What you had to find out in the equation is lambda plus 2 mu. Lambda plus 2. 2 mu which is 13 plus 2 into 15 the answer to the question um what was your this so, all right here was lambda was equal to minus 13 okay because yes lambda is equal to minus 13 this will be minus this plus 30 which will be 70 so this is the answer to the question option p hope you are clear with this let's move to the next question then Question number 18, consider 10 observations x1, x2 till x10 such that submission i is equal to 1 till 10. Submission i is equal to 1 till 10, xi minus a is equal to 2 and submission i is equal to 1 till 10, xi minus b square is equal to 40. Where alpha and beta are the positive integers, let the mean and the variance of the observations be given by this and this respectively, then beta upon alpha is equal to. So here you are given 10 observations x1, x2, 
till x10 correct and uh, you are also given that mean which is this this is equal to 6 by 5 and uh, you are given variance is equal to 84 upon 25 correct also let's write this submission i is equal to 1 till 10 x i minus a is equal to 2 submission i is equal to 1 till 10 x i minus beta this is not a this is alpha over here minus beta is equal to 40 i'll pick it up uh, first of all this one you have uh, x i minus alpha let's write it up this gives me x1 plus x2 so on till x1 now minus alpha will come 10 times so minus 10 alpha this is equal to 2 or uh, uh, dividing both sides because i'm having turn observation so dividing both sides by 10 what you will get is x1 plus x2 till x10 divided by 10 minus 10 alpha upon 10 is equal to 2 upon 10 this is nothing but your mean and mean is 6 by 5 minus 10 alpha upon 10 this will cancel is equal to this or uh, you have uh, minus alpha is equal to 2 by 10 plus uh, no minus this will be this you will have uh, the value of alpha minus alpha is equal to 10 lcm this will be 2 and uh, minus 12 so this will be minus 10 by 10 alpha will be equal to 1 i got the value of alpha okay what do you have to find out I got the value of alpha as 1. Let's go on to find out the beta now. Let's go. I have a beta over here. Same thing I will do. This will be given by. See, you are having xi minus beta in whole square in this case. This was whole square. Now, I cannot write that thing which we applied in this one will not work over here. Now, what will I do is this will be submission i is equal to 1. I will open this up. Let's write it over here. This will be now. This will be given by x1 minus beta square, x2 minus beta square, so on. x10 minus beta square is equal to 40. Let's open it up. You have x1 square, x2 square, x so on till x10 square. Now, this will be beta is coming, beta square is coming 10 times. So, this will be 10 beta square minus 2 beta into x1 plus x2 till x10. This is equal to 40. Hope you are clear till here. Okay. Now, again, dividing both sides by 10. You will have x1 square, x2 square, x10 square till, uh, divided by 10 plus beta square minus 2 beta x1 x2 x10 whole divided by 10 is equal to 4. Hope you are clear till here. Now this is what again mean. I'll write it as such. This will be given by uh, submission i is equal to 1 till 10 xi square upon number of observations plus beta square this will be minus 2 into beta and what was this this was equal to your mean mean was your 6 by 5 is equal to 4 all right so this is what this is your variance right variance actually is a uh, uh, see your variance i'm just discuss let's discuss this over here variance is given by submission i is equal to 1 till 10 uh, in this question x i square otherwise it's still n okay x i square minus mean square so if i use this in this equation let's try to fill this variance adjust this variance in this equation so this equation now will be this equation now will become be attentive a bit so this will be given by your variance plus mean square plus beta square minus 12 upon 5 beta that's equal to 4 okay 
Now, what is your variance? It was uh, in the question 84 upon 25 plus what was your mean? Mean was uh, 6 upon 5 square plus beta square minus 12 by 5 beta minus 4 is equal to 0. Or you have beta square minus 12 by 5 beta. Um, this will be 84 upon 25. 36 upon 25 minus 4 is equal to 0. Or uh, beta square minus 12 by 5 beta plus 25, 84, 36, 100 is equal to 0. Beta square minus this beta plus uh, this will give me let's see this will be this is 84 plus 36 that's gonna give me 120. So this will be this. Multiplying both sides by 25, you have 25b square minus uh, uh, 60b plus 20 is equal to 0. Again, mul dividing, multi uh, dividing both sides by 5. You will have 5 beta square minus 12 beta plus 4 is equal to 0. So you will have the beta 2 values. I want two such numbers, uh, 12. Okay, this will be 10 beta, 2 beta, plus 4, 5 beta, beta plus 2, minus 2, beta minus 2. Mm, here was minus. This is equal to 0. So the two factors will be 5 beta minus 2 and beta minus 2 is equal to 0. That means beta can either be equal to 2 or 2 by 5. These are the two values for beta. Okay. Now you have to find out uh, what was this. Beta can be equal to 2 or equal to 2 by 5. These are the two values for beta. And uh, okay, beta upon alpha is equal to. So beta is 2 and 2 by 5. Alpha came out to be 1. So the two values for this beta upon alpha is equal to it can be equal to 2 or 2 by 5 upon 1 so those are these are the two values possible for it 2 or 2 by 5 2 by 5 is not in the options but i have 2 that makes option a to be the right answer hope you are clear with this let's move to the next question Question number 19, let Ajay will not appear in JE exam with the probability P is given by 2 by 7, while both Ajay and Vijay will appear in the exam with the probability Q is equal to 1 by 5. Then the probability that Ajay will appear in the exam and Vijay will not appear is. So here you are given according to the question that the probability that both Ajay and Vijay will appear in the exam is this, with probability Q is this. So probability both will appear in the exam. This is equal to 1 by 5. And probability that Ajay will not appear in the exam. This is 2 by 7. And you know the PA. This will be equal to probability that Ajay will appear in the exam. This is given by 1 minus probability. Ajay will not appear in the exam. Which is 1 minus 2 by 7. That gives you 5 by 7. So, probability Ajay will appear in the exam and Vijay will not appear in the exam. This is given by probability Ajay will appear and Vijay will not appear. This is equal to P A minus P A intersection B. And I had the P A as 5 by 7. This is 1 by 7. On solving this, you will get 18 by 35. So, this is your answer. Option B. Hope you are clear. Let's move to the next question. Number 20, let the locus of the midpoint of the chord of this circle drawn from the origin intersect this line at P and Q. Mm -hmm. You have to find out the length of P and Q. So for that, I obviously need the coordinates for P and Q. And to find the coordinates of P and Q, let's solve this. So you have equation of the circle x square plus y square minus uh, plus 1 minus 2y is equal to 1 or uh, x square plus y square minus 2y is equal to 0. Now equation of the chord will be given by x into x1 y y1 minus y plus y1 uh, is equal to x1 square y1 square minus 2y1. Now this passes through origin. Therefore, this will be given by 0 plus 0 minus 0 plus y1 is equal to x square y1 square 2y1. Or uh, you have minus y1 is equal to this minus 2y1. Or you will have x1 square y1 square 
here will be minus y1 this is equal to 0 let's say this is equation of 1 now because it intersects with this line x plus y is equal to 1 so since it intersects with x plus y is equal to 1 so let's put this x is equal to 1 minus y in this equation okay so you will have uh, let's say this is equation 1 so from 1 you will have 1 minus y square plus y square minus y this is equal to 0 so this gives me 1 plus y square minus 2y plus y square minus y is equal to 0 2y square minus 3y plus 1 is equal to 0 other two factors will be um, minus 2y minus y plus 1 is equal to 0 2y common y minus 1 minus 1 common y minus 1 so you have 2y minus 1 and y minus 1 is equal to 0 y may be equal to 1 or 1 by 2 so for y is equal to 1 you will have the corresponding value of x as your x was equal to 1 minus y see over here this was your x is equal to 1 minus y so if when you have y uh, y is equal to 1 this will be 0 and when you have y is equal to half this will be 1 by 2 so this will be 0 and 1 by 2 let's say the p point is 0 comma 1 and the q point is 1 by 2 1 by 2 i got both the points so let's find out p q distance formula root of 1 by 2 minus 0 square 1 by 2 minus 1 square this will give me 1 by 4 whole under the root plus 1 by 4 uh, this will be root of 1 by 2. So, this is the answer to the question root of 1 by root of 2. This is option A. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 21. If the three consecutive uh, terms of a GP with the common ratio are greater than 1 are the length of the sides of the triangle and uh, this represents the greatest integer less than or equal to R, then what is the value for this expression? Mm. All right. First thing, we are given three terms. Obviously, what do you, we, we do when we are given three terms in GP? I'll assume the first term to be A by R. Second one to be A and third one to be this. A into R. So, you are given that uh, three successive are the length of the sides of the triangle. So, if they are length of the side of the triangle, you know sum of two sides length sum of two sides length is always greater than the third side correct so you have a upon r plus a is greater than a into r cancelling a on all the sides you will have one upon r plus one is greater than r or uh, you will have one plus r is greater than r square and uh, this will be r square minus r minus one is less than zero okay so from here the two roots will be given by i'm applying the quadratic formula this minus b square for ac upon two so this will be given by r square okay this will be given by r is equal to minus one minus of minus one this will be plus root of one minus 4 upon 2. So, this will be 1 plus minus root of 5 upon 2. Okay. That means this was equal to your R. So, that means R lies between 1 minus root 5 upon 2 and 1 plus root 5 upon 2. These are two values uh, between which R lies, but uh, you are given in the question R is greater than 1. So, that means R will belong to 1 and this these two values and what is the value for greatest integer of r that is equal to 1 and uh, minus r that will be equal to minus 2 so you have to find out 3 r plus greatest integer for minus r which will be equal to 1 so this is the answer to the question 1 Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. 
Question number 22, let A is equal to I2 minus 2 M into M transpose, where M is a real matrix of 2 by 1 order, such that the relation M transpose into M is equal to I1 holds. If lambda is a real number such that the relation AX is equal to lambda X holds for some non-zero real matrix X of order 2 into 1, then the sum of squares of all possible values of lambda is. Let's write down, you have A as I2 minus 2M into M transpose. Let's do the square of A matrix. This will be equal to, let's write it twice, into I2 minus 2M M transpose. So this A square will be equal to I2 minus 2M M transpose minus 2M M transpose plus 4M M transpose M m transpose or this is equal to i2 is equal to this will be 4 m m transpose and this will be again equal to 4 m m transpose because they are the same one so this will be a squared will be given by this and they will cancel out so what is your a square that is equal to i2 only and next you are given that ax is equal to lambda x holds for some non-zero real matrix x of two by one order also you are given that ax is equal to lambda x or a square x will be given as lambda ax lambda into ax so x will be equal to this will be lambda into lambda x what was your ax that was equal to lambda x only Correct. This gives you lambda square x. x is equal to lambda square x or uh, x minus lambda square x is equal to 0. x common 1 minus lambda square is equal to 0. So that means x is not equal to 0 of course. That means 1 minus lambda square is equal to 0 or lambda square is equal to 1 or lambda will be equal to plus minus 1. All right. So now what you have to find out in the question sum of squares of all possible values of lambda sum of squares of all possible values of lambda will be given by uh, plus one square plus minus one square which will be equal to two so this is the answer to the question Two. Hope you are clear. Let's move to the next question. Question number 23. Let f be a function from 0 to infinity to r and fx be given by this. fx square is given by this. You have to find out the value for this expression. I'll start from the fx. You have fx as 0 to x t f t dt. Taking derivative on both sides, differentiating both sides. You have f dash x is equal to, uh, this will be given by t, uh, t, okay, let's put in the limits also, t, f, t, limits 0 to x, or this will be equal to x into f, x minus 0. So, your f dash x is equal to x into f of x. Let's say this is 1. Also, fx square is equal to x power 4 plus x power 5. This is given in the question. Let's check. Yeah. x square is equal to this. And uh, again, taking uh, this will be... Um, see, if I convert it into fx, this will be equal to fx square plus fx raised to power 5 by 2. Right? If I reduce this uh, changing x square to x, you will get this expression correct now your f dash x from here if i in uh, differentiating this so this will be 2x plus 5 by 2 into x bar 3 by 2 let's say this is 2 so this is f dash x this is also f dash x let's compute both of them from here you will have x into from 1 and 2, you will have f into x into fx is equal to 2x 5 by 2 x bar 3 by 2 dividing both sides by x. You have fx is equal to 2 plus 5 by 2 into x bar 1 by 2. Hope you are clear till here. Now what do you have to find out? Let's pick up that. I have to find out this. Submission r is equal to 1 till 12 fr square to find 
submission r is equal to 1 till 12 f of r square. This will be given by submission r is equal to 1 till 12. And uh, this was here. Let's replace x by r. This will be 5, 2 plus 5 by 2, r power 1 by 2. Mm, his was uh, r square power 1 by 2. Okay, yeah. So this will be cancelled and you will have submission r is equal to 1 till 12, 2 plus 5 by 2 into r. All right, let's uh, see this. This will be 2 plus 5 by 2 r, r is equal to 1. Okay, plus 2 plus 5 by this, 2 plus, why this 5? 2 plus uh, 3 into 5 by this, so on. 2 plus 12 into 5 by 2. Okay, so let's get them separate. 2 is repeating itself 12 times. So this will be 2 into 12 plus 5 by 2. This is 1 plus 2 plus 3 till 12. So sum of n natural terms. This is given in by n plus. Uh, this is sum of n natural terms. n into n plus 1 upon 2. So this is equal to. 24 plus 5 by 2 into 12 into 13. This will cut at 6. You have 24 plus 30 into this, which is equal to, um, wait, 30 into 13, right? I hope I'm doing everything correct. No mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. 13 into 3. This is 390. And uh, this will be equal to 4.14. So this is the answer. There is also this 2 left over here. This 2 was missing. So this is divided by 2. This will be 24 plus 1 um, and uh, 95. Okay. So this gives me 219. That's the right answer. 219. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 24, if y is given by this expression, this plus this, then 96 y dash of pi by 6 is equal to. So that means I have to go for finding out the derivative of this y. For that, let's solve this y. y is equal to root x plus 1 x square minus root x, whole thing divided by x root x plus x plus this plus 1 by 15, 3 cos square x minus 5 cos cube x. Okay. So, I can write this y as y is equal to root x plus 1. Now, this is x square. I'll do one thing. I'll add x, uh, root x and uh, x and subtract the same thing. Okay, and this is whole thing divided by x. Uh, I'll take root x common from here as well. This will give me x plus root x plus 1. And here it was, uh, I will write it over here. This was given by plus 1 by 5 cos power 5x minus 1 by 3 cos cube x. Okay, now I'll... Uh, have this y again. This is equal to root x plus 1 under the brackets. And uh, this will be, let's take uh, some things common. I'll say x common from here. This will be x plus root x plus 1. And uh, I'll take root x common from here. This will be x plus 1 plus root x. And this whole thing is divided by root x into x plus uh, root of x plus 1 minus this will be plus 1 by 5 cos power 4 5 x minus 1 by 3 cos power 3 x. So this is y is equal to root x plus 1 here x minus x this will be one factor and uh, x minus x will be one factor over here. The second one, x plus root x 
plus one. Okay, yeah. Mm, this whole is divided by root x into x plus root x plus one minus no, it is plus cos power five x minus one by three cos cube x. So this is y is equal to root x plus one. I'll be taking root x common again from here. This will be root x minus one x plus this plus this whole thing divided by root x into uh, root x plus x plus one plus one by five cos power five x one by three cos power three x. This, this and this and this will cancel. You will have y is equal to root x plus one root x minus one plus 1 by 5 cos power 5x, 1 by 3 cos power 3x. And uh, this is equal to x minus 1 plus this minus this. Let's differentiate both sides. You will have y dash as uh, this will be 1 plus 5 upon 5, which is 1, cos power 4x. And the minus, this will be cos power 2x. Okay, one thing more, this uh, derivative of this, this is minus sine x and uh, over here minus sine x. Okay, let's write it properly. You have this as uh, sine x cos power 4x plus sine x cos power 2x. Okay, now this is your y dash. y dash at the angle pi by 6, which is given in the question. This is sine pi by 6 cos power 4 pi by 6 sine pi by 6 cos square pi by 6, which is equal to 1. Uh, mm, it, it is minus, right? Sine pi by 6 will give me 1 by 2. Multiply by this is root 3 by 2 power 4 plus uh, 1 by 2 into root 3 by 2 power 2. This will be equal to 1 minus 1 by 2 or this can be written. Okay, 1 minus this into this will be 9 upon 2 power 4 which is 16. 1 by 2 into 9 by 4. This is equal to 1 minus 9 upon 32 plus 9 upon 8 or 32 LCM, 32 minus 9 plus 36. This will give me, um, uh, let's subtract this. This will be 23 and 36. So 9 and 5, 59 upon 32. Here is a change, root of 3 square. This will give me 3 not 9 okay so here is supposed to be 3 and i will redo this step this is equal to 32 32 minus this plus 12 or this will be equal to 35 upon 32 now you have to find out this 96 y dash so 90 this is your y dash 96 y dash will be equal to 96 into 35 upon 32 on solving this will give me 105 so this is the answer to the question 105. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 25, let A be given by this, B be given by this, and C is this. Be three factors such that B cross A is equal to C cross A. If the angle between the vector C and the vector this is theta, then the greatest integer less than or equal to tangent square theta is equal to. Here you have B vector cross A vector is equal to C cross A, or uh, this can be written as C minus B. Cross A vector is equal to 0. C vector will be given by B plus lambda A vector. Um, right. So you have C as y, uh, minus 1 plus lambda. Or better to write uh, C is given by uh, B is uh, minus I minus J 8J plus 2K plus lambda into I J and k. So c will be given by minus 1 plus lambda i 
माइनस एट प्लस लेमडा जे टू प्लस लेमडा के पर यू आर गिवन दैट सी इज दिस वैक्टर बट C vector is given to us for i c two j c three k. This gives you minus one plus lambda is equal to four minus eight plus lambda is equal to c three and two plus lambda is equal to c. Uh, this is equal to c two and this is equal to c three. From here you have lambda is equal to five. From if I put lambda is equal to five, this will be. C two, C two will be equal to minus three. Similarly, you will get uh, C three as seven. I got this. So now your C vector will be four i minus three j plus seven k. Okay. Uh. Okay. Your angle between the C vector and this vector is theta. Let's say this is vector x. Let us say that. So. Let's say the vector which was given to you that is x three i four j plus k. Now angle between them is theta. So cos theta this will be given by four into minus uh, third three. This will be minus twelve. Modulus of it minus three minus this. Here x is three only, not minus three. So this is supposed to be three, and this will be plus twelve. Minus twelve plus seven whole divided by root of four square, which is sixteen. Ah, uh, three square, seven square, multiplied by ah uh, three square, four square, and one square. Okay, so this is equal to this twelve, and twelve will cancel. This will be seven upon root of. Uh, this is gonna give me seventy four and twenty six. This is cos theta, so cos square theta will be given by forty nine upon seventy four into twenty six only. What I have to find out is the uh, um, greatest integer less than or equal to tangent square theta. So tangent this can be written as secant square theta is equal to this. Or uh, you know, tangent square theta is equal to secant square theta minus one. So this gives me seventy four twenty six forty nine minus one. On solving this whole thing, you will get your approximate answer as thirty eight point two six. You have to find the value to the nearest integer. So this is thirty eight. So this is the answer to the question. Thirty eight. Hope you are clear. Let's move to the next question. Question number twenty six. The line L one, L two till L twenty are distinct. For n is equal to one, two, three till ten. All lines L two n minus one are parallel to each other, and all the lines L two n pass through the given point P. The maximum number of point of intersection of the pair of lines from the set L one till L twenty is equal to. So here you are given that uh, ten lines. They are concurrent, and Rest ten are parallel lines. Ten lines are parallel. Let's check the odd lines, which will be L one, L three, L five, L nineteen, and even lines. This will be L two, L four, till L twenty. Now for the maximum intersection for Maximum intersection, even lines, even lines C two into zero point of intersection plus one line from odd into One line from even lines plus one point of intersection of concurrent lines. Right. So this will be given by ten C two into zero ten C one ah uh, into 10 C1 plus 
this will be 10 this will be 0 10 c1 this will be 10 10 1 this is gonna be 101 so this is answer to the question 101 hope you're clear let's move to the next question number 27 says 3.0 p and q where a b greater than 0 are lying on the parabola y is equal to x square let s be the s1 be the area of region bounded by the line pq and the parabola s2 be the region of the triangle opq if the minimum value of s1 upon s2 is m upon n then gcd of uh, mn and that's the greatest common divisor of mn is equal to 1 what is the value for m plus n Let's make the figure to understand this. Now, this is your required figure. This is your parabola. Y is equal to x square. And this line PQ, this line PQ, this bisects the, this intersects the parabola at the points B and Q. Now, let's first of all, this is the equation of the parabola. Let's of, first of all form the equation of PQ line, which is given by Y minus Y1 is equal to M into X minus X1. So, here I am taking any point, let's say B. So, this will be equal to, so I am taking the point Y minus A square is equal to, slope is given by A square minus B square upon A minus of minus B, which will be A plus B into X minus A. Y minus A square will be equal to, this will be A plus B into A minus B upon A plus B into X minus A. This will cancel. You will have Y minus A square is equal to A minus B into X minus A or uh, Y minus A square will be equal to, this will be, um, let's open up the brackets I think. Right. Okay. Let it be like this. This one I will not open. And this will be minus A square plus AP. This minus and minus they will cancel. Y will be equal to A minus B into X minus plus uh, AB. Okay. Yeah. This is your equation of the line PQ. Right. Now the equation of the line PQ is derived. I want to know the area S1. S1 is the area of the region bounded by the line PQ and the parabola. So S1 will be given by from limits minus B to A. See over here. This is minus B point and uh, this one will be A. So from minus B to A, the area covered by this line minus the area covered by the parabola which is this okay mm, let's do this okay so now just have to find out the integral easy one this will be equal to integral um i don't think let's solve it a bit this and uh, this will be given by a x minus b x plus a b minus x square dx so this will be equal to ax square upon 2, bx square upon 2, abx minus x cube upon 3. This is minus b and this is a. Right. So you have to fill in the limits now. Let's put the limits. This will be given by um, a cube upon 2 minus a b. Uh, this will be a square b upon 2 plus a b. Here was x supposed to be a b x. Okay. This will be a square b minus a cube upon 3. Let's check it once I have done everything correct. So this is a cube upon this and uh, a square b upon 2 a square b and this minus. Now I will be putting minus b over here. Okay. So this will give me a b square upon 2 minus b cube upon 2 minus uh, minus this will be uh, no so this will be plus only no this will be a b square and plus b cube upon 3 okay now let's open this this will be a cube upon 2 minus um, plus a square b upon this minus a cube upon 3 minus uh, 
this is uh, a b square so this is minus minus plus 1 by 2 a b square plus b cube by 2 minus b cube by 3 okay hope you are clear till here so this is equal to let's take the lcms i think okay so this will be equal to 6 I'll be LCM. This will be 3A cube minus 2A cube plus 3A square B plus 3A B square plus uh, um, this will be 3B cube minus 2B cube. Okay, this gives me A cube plus B cube plus 3AB into A plus B whole thing divided by 6 which is nothing but 1 by 6 of a plus b whole cube this is your area s1 and s2 was the area occupied by the triangle s this is by the triangle p o q so this will be given by the coordinates of p o and q i had no all the three coordinates we have the coordinates a a square q had the coordinates minus b b square and o had the coordinates 0 0 so this will be minus b b square 0 0 a a square 1 1 1 this will be equal to on solving let's solve this uh, um, okay so this will be minus b minus a square minus b square 0 and minus a plus 1 this will be 0 so this gives you a square b plus a b square i'll be taking a b common half 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 over here so a b common a b by 2 common brackets a plus b i got s2 also this is 1 by 2 a b a plus b what you have to find out was s1 upon s2 s1 was this s2 was this this will give me 1 by 3 a plus b square upon a b. Okay, let's open up. This will be 1 by 3 a square b square 2 a b. Whole thing divided by a b. This will be this a upon b, b upon a plus 2. Now, let's get back to the question. Uh, this is equal to m by n gcd of m by n is equal to 1 but i got something of the form this right now see b upon a plus a upon b this is greater than equal to 2 therefore s1 upon s2 to be minimum this should be equal to 4 upon 3 this is your m and this is your n this makes a uh, m 4 n 3 so the sum of both of them is 7 this is the answer to the question 7 hope you're clear with this let's move to the next question Question number 28, the sum of square of all possible values of k for which the area bounded by these two parabolas is maximum is so you have two parabolas. The first one is k y square is uh, this and the second one two y square is equal to k x. From here you have x is equal to uh, two y square upon k. So let's find out these are the two equations. Let's find their point of intersection for that let's fill this value of x in this equation you have ky square is equal to 2 into y minus 2 y square upon k let's divide uh, take y common from both the sides so you will have y mm. see one thing that uh, if i can take y that means one root will be y is equal to zero one possibility and uh, then i will divide both sides by y this will be ky is equal to 2 into 1 minus 2y upon k or you will have uh, ky plus 4y upon k this is equal to 2 or y is equal to 2 upon k plus 4 upon k or this is 2k upon k square 
upon 4. Right? Now, the area will be from limits. These are the two limits. 0 to 2k upon k square uh, plus 4. This will be given by area bounded by this parabola minus this one. 2y square upon k dy. Okay. So, let's find out the integral now. This is area will be given by uh, this will be first of all y square by 2 then it will be minus of k by 2 plus 2 upon this into y cube upon 3 okay i have just combined both of these terms for the y square this will be given by minus k y square upon 2 minus 2 y square upon k or uh, this will be y square was taken common. This minus y square was taken common. And uh, this was k by 2 plus 2 by k. Okay. So, this is the one. Hope you are clear with this. This is uh, limits 2k upon k square plus 4. Correct. So, your area becomes. Now, let's fill in the limits. This will be equal to y square upon y square. You have to put so, this will be equal to 2k upon k square plus 4 whole square 1 by 2 minus k square plus 4 upon 2k into 1 by 3 into this. Okay. So, this will be equal to this will cancel. This, this, this will cancel. And uh, you will have 2k square upon k square plus 4. And uh, this was 1 by 2 minus this, 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3. This will give me 1 by 6 into uh, 4 into 1 upon, I can write it like this. Okay, uh, 1 by 4, 1 upon k plus 4 upon k whole square, right? I can write it like this. Now, am is greater than equal to gm k into this this is greater than 2 this implies so that means k plus 4 upon k is greater than equal to 4 or uh, this area is maximum when k will be equal to 4 by k uh, both of them will be equal so that means uh, k square will be equal to 4 or k will be equal to plus minus 2 right so i think that's it this is what we needed and uh, so the sum of square of all possible values of k for which this is equal to uh, maximum okay so you have to find out the sum of all possible values of a let's see sum of squares of all possible values of k will be equal to plus 2 square minus 2 square which is equal to 8. So, this is the answer to the question 8. Hope you are clear. Let's move to the next question. Question number 21 dx by dy is given by this x1 is equal to 1. You have to find 5 x2. You have dy by dx is equal to this expression. This can be written as 1 minus y square upon y plus x upon y. Okay, so this can be written as dx upon dy minus uh, x upon y is equal to this, right? Or dx upon dy minus, uh, here will be plus minus 1 by y x is equal to this. So, this is of the form dx by dy plus py into x is equal to qy. So, here the integrating factor will be given by e raised to power p dy or this will be e raised to power minus. I will write outside 1 upon y dy 
or this will be equal to e raised to power the integral will be log 1 upon y or this will be equal to 1 upon y only. Now, the solution for this differential equation will be equal to this is given by y into uh, here it will be x into integrating factor is equal to integral of q of uh, y into dy. So, this will be given by x into 1 by y is equal to integral of 1 minus y square upon y square into dy or you have x is equal to um, x upon y is equal to this will be given by minus 1 upon y minus y plus c and dividing uh, multiplying both sides by y you will have x is equal to minus 1 um, minus y square plus cy. Now you are given in the question x1 is equal to 1. So this is when I put x is equal to 1, this equation will be 1 is equal to minus 1 minus uh, 1 plus c into 1 only. Okay. So this gives me c is equal to 3, right? So what is this equation then becomes? It becomes x is equal to minus 1 minus y squared plus 3y. Now you have to find out 5x of 2. Let's write 5x of 2. So this is uh, 5 into x of 2. That means uh, this will be minus 1 minus 4 plus 6. Right. Uh, this will give me. 5 only on solving because yes. So this answer to the question is this is the right answer. Hope you are clear with this. So let's move to the last question of the paper. Question number 30. Let ABC be an isosceles triangle in which angle in which A is at this point and angle A is given by this. Let's make the figure to understand it. So this is your triangle. You are given that A angle is A point is minus 1, comma 0 and angle A is 120 degree 2 pi by 3. AB is equal to AC. That means these two angles are equal which will be 30 degree each. B lies on the positive x-axis. So if it is lying on the positive x-axis, let's say this is equal to B0. Next, you are given BC is equal to 4 root 3. This line is given to you. BC is equal to 4 root 3. And the line BC intersects this line at alpha and beta. You have to find out the value for this expression. Okay. So, this is your angle C. This side will be small c. This is your angle A. This will be small a. And this will be your small b. Now, by the sine rule, you have C upon sine 30 is equal to uh, a upon sine 120. So C is equal to A was 4 root 3 into sine 30 upon sine 120 degree. Okay. So this is 4 root 3. Sine 30 is this. And uh, this is given by root 3 upon 2. This gives me 4. So, this is your C. You are given that this is an isosceles triangle. So, B is equal to C is equal to 4. Hope you are clear till there. And uh, now, what is the length of your side AB? AB length will be given by root of B minus of minus 1. What is your A point? It was minus 1, 0 and B was B comma 0. Square plus 0. So, this is equal to mod of B plus 1. Slope of AB will be given by 0 minus 0 upon B plus 1, which is equal to 0. Similarly, uh, slope of BC, this will be given by minus 1 by root 3. Now, why is that? Because you have this as tangent of 30 degree. Now, tangent of 30 or uh, you can say this tangent of minus 30 degree because the angle is taken in the clockwise direction. See, like this. Okay. Uh, so... Mm, yeah, angle is taken in this direction. So, this is equal to minus 1 by root 3. This is the slope of line BC. I already have the point B. I have the slope. Let's make the equation of line BC, which is given by y minus y1 m into x minus x1. So, this will be y minus 0 is equal to minus 1 by root 3 x minus x1, which is B. Okay, so this makes it uh, the equation as y root 3 is equal to minus x plus b. 
or uh, you have x plus root 3y is equal to b. And what is b? That was equal to 4. So this equation is this, right? This is the equation. And you are given the second equation that bc intersects this line at alpha and beta. So this is your bc and this is your second line x plus, uh, what is that line? y is equal to x plus 3. So this will be y is equal to x plus 3. So let's write down two equations. You have x plus root 3 y is equal to 4 or you have x minus y is equal to minus 3. Correct. Minus plus minus plus. So you will have a root 3 plus 1 into y is equal to 7. See, there is a little discrepancy that is that I have taken this B and this also B. They have taken the same variables. Let's take this as D only. Okay, so because uh, these two variables, they are having the same name by the chance. So here will be D is equal to C is equal to 4. And uh, here was AB is equal to this. AB is equal to the line D. So this is equal to 4. From here, you have B as 3. Now this B is this one right so this was equal to 3 and this was equal to 3 i'm repeating what was the problem see over here this variable b and b they were taken like the same it should have taken some another name by mistake i took same name for the these two variables okay so i have set this as d and uh, here will be d this one will be d and uh, this one will be d o oh sorry not this one Okay, so this one will be D, right? And uh, here D is equal to C is equal to 4 because this was an isosceles triangle. Correct? Mm -hmm. Now I saw that AB is equal to B plus 1. Now this B was this. It represented this B. Now this is equal to 4. This gives me B is equal to 3. Small B is equal to 3. Okay, so now this equation becomes x plus root 3 y is equal to 3 and y is equal to x plus 3. Here was supposed to be 3. Hope you are clear with it. Okay, now this is equal to 6. So y becomes equal to this. 6 upon root 3 plus 1. So let's solve this. y is equal to x plus 3. I want to get the value of x now. This will be given by, let's take uh, 3 common 2 upon root 3 plus 1 minus 1 is equal to x. 3 upon 2 minus root 3 minus 1 upon root 3 plus 1 is equal to x. Or uh, this will be given by um, 3 and here will be 1 minus root 3 upon 1 plus root 3 as the value for x. Right, uh, this x is your alpha and uh, this one is your beta. Right, let's do one thing. I'll rationalize the denominator. This will be 1 minus root 3 whole square upon, uh, or instead of that, what will I do? I'll do this. There's a reason because you'll just come to understand why I have not rationalized the denominator. Instead, I've multiplied the numerator and the denominator with 1 plus root of 3. Yes. So this will be giving me this and here will be 1 minus 3 upon 1 plus root 3 square. This is equal to alpha or alpha is equal to minus 6 upon 1 plus root 3 whole square. Yes. What will be alpha square? This will be equal to 36 upon 1 plus root 3 power 4. And now what was your beta? Beta was this. Beta power 4 will be given by 6 power 4 upon root 3 plus 1 power 4. Dividing both of them, alpha square upon, you had to find out beta power 4 upon alpha square. So beta power 4 was given by 6 power 4 upon root 3 plus 1 power 4 divided by 36 upon 1 plus root 3 power 4. This will be given by 6 power 4 upon root 3 plus 1 whole power 4 divided by multiplied by root 3 plus 1 
whole power 4 and this is 6 power 2. This and this, this and this will cancel and you will get 36 as your answer. So this is the one, 36. This is the answer to the question. And students, with that, we have completed all the 30 questions of this paper. And the students, don't forget to visit our website, www.examsnet.com. Here you will find all the entrance exam question papers with the detailed PDF solutions for a better preparation of your exams. You must download our app. The link is available in the description box. So students keep shining, keep rising high. That's all for this paper. A very best of luck. Bye. Mm -hmm.